What's up, divas? And what's up, divas? It's your girl, April. So you guys already know what time it is. You already know how we do this. It's Wednesday, of course, and that means it's time for real talk. You know, dish it out, talk business, talk shit to all of y'all nosy-ass people in the world or just want to know what the fuck is going on with me. So yes, you guys, I am back for another real talk. I hope you guys had a great week. First of all, before we even get into anything, like, do you guys see all of this real pretty red on me? So yesterday, all right, because I always tell you guys what's going on with me, how I'm doing, whatever. First of all, I got my baby hair slicked down, okay? Oh, got me some new lashes on. Of course, I always do my own lashes for those who have been asking me. I do have a video that has like two years old on my channel. It's really more than two years old, okay? But I had to re-upload it, so yes, and how I do my individuals. But anyway, other than that, um, yes, I got me on a new lace front. I mean, it ain't even that new. It's probably like six years old, but it really wasn't like cool with me back then. Like, I really wasn't feeling it. So, like I told you guys, when you have a wig that you really don't like or is getting old, you just hold on to that shit and wear it like this, okay? So that way you still look cute. And my daughter did take me back to get my nails done again. So a girl is keeping up with the um, manis, I think that's what, yeah, mani petty, whatever. You know what I'm saying, manicures, I am keeping up with that, my appearance. But, so let's get into this. So yesterday I went to the post office to drop off a package. I'm going to tell you why I dropped off a package. It wasn't for anyone that purchased a wig. It was to send one the fuck back. Okay. So I love helping everybody. I love doing videos. I love being there for everybody, especially my community, meaning my black people. Okay. Everybody is my community. It really doesn't matter, especially if you're a female and you are need to help. You know what I'm saying? You want to get your business out there. I'd be more than happy to assist you. So young lady hits me up. Asked me to review her braid wig. I was all for it. You know what I'm saying? I always wanted a braid wig. I already had some braid wigs. I already did some videos on some braid wigs. But this one had the actual soft lace. They were small box braids, okay? Not the twist that I've done. So they were small box braids. And I really wanted to try one out that was like handmade by someone, you know, that sit there and do it themselves. I was so excited. I was like, yes, girl, I would be more than happy to. So she sends me the wig. Now, let me tell you, I was so excited about this. I hurried up and took it out the package and threw the packaging out, meaning the box and whatever it came in. It also came with this cute hat that she hooked up, and I'll have to show you guys that. But anyway, so I take this wig out of its little satchel, and um, it smelled like somebody's grandmother's ass and addict, okay? I was like, what the fuck? This shit smells horrible. And not to mention, did she use like an old wig? All right, when I say an old wig, like I'm talking about like an old synthetic wig. You know, you know what the cap looks like for synthetic wigs. They're just like regular cheap ass wig. I know it was an old cap because I seen the hair and I seen that it was sewn together and it smells like, like I said, somebody's grandmother's ass or like some old lady ass perfume mixed with grandmother ass and addict. Okay. This is the smell and it just smelled horrible. I was like, Oh my God, you could smell it as soon as you took it out. Not to mention. So I went ahead and I tried this shit on because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Like the quality of the braids were really pretty, so pretty, but they were very micro tiny braids, like micro tiny. God knows how long it took her to put this shit together, but I'm like, okay, so she used an old wig. Okay, she cut the hair off an old wig and did this. I don't really know if I really want to put this on my head, but it smelled kind of bad. So I, you know, doubled up, doubled up my stocking cap. You know, like niggas double up their condoms for skanky bitches. I doubled up my fucking wig cap for the skanky ass wig to put it on. Because I really wanted to see how it looked on my head, like how it was sitting. Because just from the look of the parting of it, it was like, girl, please, this shit is so detectable. Now, I'm going to show y'all a picture, okay, in a minute, so that y'all can get some good laughs. Because I'm pretty sure you guys want to have some good laughs. And at my expense, I'm going to give y'all that. So, in a minute. So I said, April, put on two wig caps because maybe it don't look as bad on as it looks in your hand. And if it don't look that bad on, maybe you can maneuver around it, wash it. I don't know. Okay, this is what I'm thinking because I'm always willing to give everybody a chance. So I put this motherfucking wig on now. First of all, before I even put it on, I'm looking at it. I'm like, this is on an old wig. Like, it's an old wig. Like, the cap is not like 
a closure cap. It's not like a lace frontal cap. It's none of those. This is what I'm thinking. It was supposed to be made like a lace frontal. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying, okay. I don't know how I'm going to pull it to the side and make it look realistic, but you know, April, don't disappoint people now. They keep saying you slay them wigs, girl. You can slay this. You can fucking slay this, hunty. So I put this shit on. Now, mind you, I didn't have no makeup on for this picture. Oh, my God. And I looked like somebody had victimized me. Like the wig had victimized me. All right? Like, literally, it looked like I had went through some shit in my life. And I just got off of the worst type of drugs and alcohol that there was. And I had been in rehab for a couple of years. And I didn't know which was trending. Okay? This is how the fuck I looked when I put this shit on. And I said to myself, April... Is there any way you can make this look real? Then I snatched the shit off and I was like, hell to the fucking no. First of all, this shit is a motherfucking insult. If you think you're about to send me some fucking addict ass smelling bad granny perfume smelling fucking detectable wig looking piece of shit. There's no way I'm about to fucking wear this and promote this shit. So I said this to myself, April, put this shit back in the bag and contact the young lady because I'm never wanting to hurt anybody's feelings. That's just me. I, I'm not that type of person that wants to go around hurting anybody's feelings because we all have to go back to the drawing board sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I have had my issues where I had to go back to the drawing board sometimes. So I'm not up for bashing and really hurting somebody's intentions and feelings. I really don't think she meant to insult you like this. However, if you ask me to do a review, I would really appreciate it if you didn't sell me no funky ass wig, okay? Let me tell you. So, I see she has sent me a message on Instagram, DM'd, and I, I looked at it while I was driving, but I couldn't respond because I'm driving in motherfucking traffic. I, I can't fucking drive my truck and text at the same time. So, and especially out here with these motherfucking sorry ass drivers of Arizona who really don't know how to fucking drive. These bitches that have like all the world of space and you still fucking have accidents. It's, it's just really ridiculous. But anyway, so I said, I'm going to message her back when I get home. Well, when I get home, I totally forget. You know, I have other things going on. I have kids, I have grandkids, so I have other things going on. So a day or two goes by and I go back on Instagram. I'm not on Instagram like that. I'm not one of those trolling ass people that sit on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter all day. I can't do that because it's just not my thing. And besides that, it's fucking boring. Like whoever can sit on these social media sites all day and just be like, they got two motherfucking devices scrolling and shit to find out all the goddamn tea and gossip. I'm not one of those people, okay? Now, mind you, this is not two phones, okay? This is a phone and this is an iPod. Now, so, I finally go back on Instagram and she, I seen there was another message, you know, a little highlighted. So I go and I'm like, what the fuck did this bitch just say to me? She waiting for me to respond. I don't even remember what her original message said to me, but I, I guess it was, did you get the wig or something like that? I don't know. It was something friendly. Well, the second one was, I'm still sitting here waiting for your response. Like, hold the fuck up. Did you just send me this motherfucking message with your raggedy ass, stinking ass motherfucking wig? Bitch, is you crazy? Do you really know who the fuck you're talking to? So I said, oh, yeah, I totally forgot. You know what I'm saying? I got busy. So, um, yeah, about that wig. And I had to send her a picture. I said, this don't look real. I said, not to mention it smelled horrible. I said, um, I felt insulted that you would even send me that. It smelled horrible. There's no way I could wear this. So she apologized. And I asked what the address was because I was going to send it back. And she told me to take a look and find another wig. So she did have some really, really nice ones. So I sent it back. And she's going to send me out another one. So this time around, I'm hoping that it does not smell and that it looks really pretty because I'm so excited. I was very excited about the first one. And yeah. So the whole moral of the story, because I went totally off topic. The reason why I went to post office is to return that stinking ass wig. But when I went to my post office box, Okay, there were four packages. One of them was for a customer to um, make her a lace frontal, and um, then 
the other three were for me and Mumsy, okay? So one of them was for a video review to just model these two dresses. And I was all for that because a bitch do like some shit. I do like to get some free shit, okay? It saves me money from spending my own money when I could just go ahead and pay my bills with what I need to do and take care of my kids. So, you know what I'm saying? Keep in mind, I am not fucking rich. Okay, let's just keep it in mind. So the things that I get, I do use, like the clothing and stuff, and you know, it comes in handy. All right, so I enjoy to do YouTube because this is my hobby and I love being on here, running my motherfucking mouth. So anyway, there was two packages, of, um, two other packages that were non-video modeling related. Okay, so me and Mumsy got two packages and I was so excited. So I have to send a very special thank you to my divas, Winter. Okay, so she lives in Rockford, Illinois. I'm not about to give y'all last name. But did Winter send me a freaking... Oh my God, I'm so goddamn excited right now. Because it's so funny. You guys know me so well. Like, totally over well. And, ah, oh man. Listen. Y'all see this beautiful redness. Now listen. Listen, hunties. Don't get jealous. Do you see who is on my nightgown? Wonder Woman, all right? She sent me this Wonder Woman nightgown. And let me tell you, when I opened it and I seen it in the bag, I just freaked out in the post office because I was about to buy this for myself like two weeks ago from Walmart. And um, I put it back because I was like, April, you got bills to pay. Put the nightgown back. You can get it another time. So I was, a, it was in my shopping cart and I was walking around the store. And at the time of checkout, I put it back because even though it was only, you know, 10 bucks, it, it adds up. And I really did want it, but I had other things to pay for. And you have to put your priorities first. You know, some people be, they feel like, oh, it's only $10, but that adds up after a while. You know what I'm saying? That could have been my light bill, my internet bill, my gas. It adds the fuck up. Okay. So. I put it back and I, I thought about it for that night and I was like, damn, Mumsy, I should have got the nightgown. And it's so weird because I actually was filming while I was in um, Walmart doing a vlog and I showed the nightgown. So it was just weird and I put it back and, you know, I thought about it. I was like, damn, I should have got that. Mumsy was like, yeah, you should have got it. But I said, you know what? I didn't need it. I'll get it another time, hopefully, to be there. When I seen this, I was freaking out. I was like, Mumsy, look. And she was like, that's the nightgown you wanted. So I was so excited and so happy when I got this. Like, seriously, like, literally happy. So I took a shower this morning because I did get it yesterday. And I took a shower last night. But I took a shower this morning again because I wanted to wear it for the video. And I want to say thank you so much, Winter, because I love it. And I'm so glad I put it back um, because thank you so much. This is what I really did want. I wanted this nightgown so bad. It's so cute and it fits me like a glove, honey. Okay. Wonder Woman is my all-time favorite. I've loved her since I was a little kid and she's my all-time favorite. And if you have something that's really, really your favorite, you never forget. So I have like Wonder Woman Barbie dolls that have never been opened all kind of memorabilia of Wonder Woman that I keep sacred and close to my heart. So when I got this, I was totally happy. She also did send me, because you guys know me so well, she also did send me one of her favorite creamy body washes, which is available at the Dollar Tree, she did tell me. So you guys, if you are at the Dollar Tree, check this out. This is supposedly, since Winter said, a good brand, and I am going to be using this tonight. And she even packed it up in a bag so that it wouldn't get all over my nighty. And it does, damn, this does smell really good. This is the lavender scent, and it smells relaxing with lavender and vanilla. So I'm definitely going to be using this. And she also did send me a card um, with a cute little dog on it. She, it says, hello, how are you? And she wrote me this letter in it. So I want to say thank you so much. I was so psyched and so excited. So, yes, you guys know me so well. Then also, one of my other divas here, Miss Gurr. I think that's how you say her name. Um, Jay Gurr. Um, she's so sweet. She lives in San Diego, California. This is the second thing that she has sent me and Mumsy. And this is a spring round random surprise pack that she sent us. She also is so sweet. Um, 
you know, a lot of you ladies feel like family to me. And I just wish that I could just knock on all of you guys' doors and just hug you all because rather, you know, I am a potty mouth, but I'm a really good person and I'm a really friendly and down to earth person, regardless of how I run my mouth and how I may curse. I'm really still a good person. I'm not obnoxious and ratchet out in public. I'm really just like a really quiet, low key person. And sometimes when I meet people in public, sometimes the way they approach me, I get overwhelmed because I'm kind of shy. So, so I think being able to talk to you guys like this kind of helps me come out of my shell a lot. You know what I'm saying? When I first started YouTube, I was really nervous and I just really was hard for me. But I just realized, you know what, April, just be you. Be you. Just be you, who, how you are around your family and friends. So this is me on a normal basis. I'm not, but in public, I'm not loud and obnoxious and cursing. I mean, I do curse, but you know what I'm saying? I'm not loud about it. I curse. I'll curse your ass out too, but I'm just really cooling down to earth. So... Miss Girl, she is so sweet. Uh, she has donated to my GoFundMe account uh, multiple times. And I just want to thank her. And I want to just thank everybody who has been donating. And in case you guys are like, what is it for? It's to get my teeth fixed. Um, my teeth have been falling out. And I'm not really sure why they're breaking off and falling out, but they have been falling out. So right now I have no teeth on the side right here. I have one. Just one. And um it bothers me a lot. So I'm able to, um, now get, um, a brace, uh, dentures, not for my whole mouth, but in on the sides here so that my teeth don't space. And also I'm going to be trying to get my two front teeth like covered with crowns. So that way my insecurity could just, you know, I could feel a little bit more comfortable with myself because it hurts a lot when you have people on here and social media out in the real world who, who constantly talking about my teeth. So it does bother me a lot. Um, and those are really pricey things. So I really am grateful for all the help that I've been getting. But she has been so sweet. So she sent me and Mumsy um, a package. And Mumsy already took her stuff out and went about her business with it. So I wanted to show you guys this because when I seen this, I started freaking out again. I was like, oh, my fucking God. I cannot. Excuse me. I should not have said those two words in the F word and the godly word in one sentence. Oh, my fucking goodness. Okay. She sent me a Wonder Woman patch. Do you guys see this? Like, do you guys freaking see this? This is freaking amazing, okay? It's huge. And I am about to iron this on my denim jacket, okay? I'm so excited about this. Totally excited. Then did she send me a October 3rd issue, October 2006, Wonder Woman DC comic in the plastic. Oh my freaking goodness. This is, I don't even want to take it out of the plastic. I did, but this is going in, in my showcase. I'm so damn excited about this. Like I can't freaking believe this. This issue is 11 years old. Every time I look at this, I get chills, okay? I get ch literally chills, like, wow. This is amazing. This is freaking amazing. And then, listen, an adult coloring book with Wonder Woman? I did not even know they had such a thing. Do you see these pages? This is balls. Like, totally amazing, like, man this is really some great artwork in here which is amazing because these pictures are just like so detailed and gorgeous um there's one that i want to use to bring to a tattoo artist to get a new tattoo and this book is amazing like my gosh wow i was so excited yesterday from all this wonder woman stuff that I almost pissed my pants. No, I really didn't. But I was so excited and so overwhelmed. I just really couldn't believe, like, the trouble. And I, I'm pretty sure it's not the trouble, but just what my family, my YouTube family does for me. Like, you guys really don't know what it means to me. And I know you're probably like, girl, she crazy. It's just Wonder Woman. But the nightgown, the coloring book the comic book, the applique, it all just means a lot to me right here. And it means even more than you guys think because little bit of things like this mean a lot to me. 
So it also makes me realize that you guys do listen to me and you guys know me so well. And some people that are even like my own family, they don't even know me that well. They don't know that I like Wonder Woman like that. I'm pretty sure my mom does, but she probably doesn't even think about it. But it really touches me. And I just really want to say thank you to everybody. I was like so excited. And certain things you just don't know. They really brighten up your day. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to say thank you to everybody with the letters and the cards and packages in my postal box. It just, you know, I'm like so happy. I did get some really cool socks as well. I got these emoji socks. Mumsy took those. So I'm thinking they were for her. So, and if they were, they are now, girl. But I like these because emojis are Mumsy's thing, not mine. So Mumsy loves emojis. She got this huge package yesterday in the mail from my friend Shay with a bunch of emoji stuff in it and she went to town on it okay she was so happy and i also did get these things with the um wonder woman stuff some nails from the dollar tree which i love well i'm not really sure if they're from the nails are from dollar tree and maybelline so yes i'm so excited like i get to try out new things and like listen honeys thank you everyone and i love you all so much and I'm so excited. So thank you guys so, so much. And I got postcards and all kinds of stuff. I'm not going to read you what my cards say because I don't really think it's none of y'all business. But yes. So I just wanted to keep that. I wanted to share that with you guys. And I'm sorry for crying a little bit. I just get real emotional. Not even emotional, but... I cry out of happiness too, not when I'm depressed, but I just, you know what? It's hard sometimes to believe that people even like me. Like, it's crazy. I know you guys are like, what, girl? But it's crazy. Like, I just be like, wow, people really do like me. Like, I'd be so happy about that. Like, when people come up to me in the street and they be like, oh my God, your muffin is my lovers. And they hug me. I'd be like, oh my God. Like, I'd be so excited. Um, the other day I was in Target with my family and this young lady, I think she was from Nigeria. I'm not really sure, but her accent was just so pretty. And um, she approached me and um, we was in the, sh the shoe section. And you guys see, I am not bougie. I shop at the cheap and expensive stores because I am a budget chick, okay? I'm a budget chick. And she was talking to me. She was like, you know, I don't want to bother you. And I was like, it's okay. And we was talking and we took a selfie together. I love shit like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I just love me and people out in public. Some people are, some people get uh, to be a little bit overwhelming to me sometimes. Like I've had somebody approach me and um, at the mall, she just like jumped in front of me. Like, oh my God, you're my fitness my lovers. And I was like, I was taken by surprise. Like, and I was like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. And she's like, you're not how muffin is my lovers. And I was like, she's like, you look like, I was like, no, I'm sorry. No. And I just kind of like got lost in the crowd after that one, because it was the way she approached me. It scared, it kind of scared me. It wasn't even the way she approached me. It was the way she approached me. It, it kind of made me nervous and overwhelmed. And at that point, I didn't know what to do. So I just wanted to kind of get myself away from the situation because she like, it was a crowd of people and she just like literally jumped out of the crowd. And it was just like, oh shit, what the fuck do I do now? So, yeah, but I really do like meeting people. I met people at the airport and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so, yes. So I don't want to keep rambling on because I have went on to 23 minutes of y'all motherfucking time. So if you guys want a real talk about any life situation that y'all is thinking about, then you can go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line, real talk. Also, thank you guys, everyone, for leaving your comments on my last week's real talk about tv shows because a lot of those i did mention that i did watch um but yes i am almost done with season three of how to get away with murder and let me tell you guys for those of you ladies who watch how to get away with murder with viola davis you know the white guy that's on the show frank listen let me tell y'all something season three when did he fucking shave his face off when he shaved his hair off his fra face frank you know frank her assistant, when he shaved his facial hair and his head, his hair off his head, a bitch fell in love. Okay. Did I Google him that same motherfucking night? I did not know he was the kid from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And I watched that show faithfully every motherfucking day. He is so fucking easy on the eyes. Oh my God. I fell in love with his ass. Did he look like he looked like a god when he shaved all his facial hair off. Like, he was already handsome with the facial hair and shit. But when he took it off, a bitch had to um, change her underclothes. 
I have a baby any day with him. And I'm, look, I'm about to be 43 and I don't even want no kids no more. You know, I have my hysterectomy, but a bitch will find out and figure out how. Because he was that motherfucking fine. I'm just saying. So on that, let's get into this real talk. All right, ladies. So, dear April, first off, I just want to say that I love your Dollar Tree hauls and the Real Talk Wednesdays. The Real Talks make twisting my hair up for bed tolerable. And also, your daughter, Mumsy, is adorable. And she got a big emoji smile. I know you hate long emails, so let me sum this up as much as I can so you won't cuss my ass out. LOL. You can call me Lisa, my boyfriend, Brian. And I have been together for almost four years. We are both from in the same state, but I'm from the city. He's from the country. We live an hour away from each other, so the distance isn't a huge problem. But we've been trying to move in together since a year and a half of us dating. I love my man. He is a great dude, despite a few of the flaws I am about to mention. Brian is great with children. I don't have any myself, but my niece and godson love him. And I also have a toddler cousin who will go to him before she goes to me. Makes me mad as hell. He's such a handyman, sweet, smart, funny. My friends and family love him. And let me add that he is bomb as hell in the bed. First man to ever truly make love to me. And she puts a heart at the end of it. The problem is his finances, which at first wasn't a huge problem, but lately has become an ongoing thing. I am not the type of woman to make excuses for any man, but I do, dis but I do observe things and can see where an issue can stem from. When I first met him, he lived with his mother. Basically, a family member gave me the tea on how she's been in trouble for money scams, meaning his mother. She had Brian paying the rent and utilities for the house, which would leave him with little to nothing for himself. Of course, this was a burden to him. I'm going to jump off track for a second to say this about myself. I am a very independent individual. I learned coming up to always make sure me, myself, and I are straight. I have an okay job. I save money and I have good credit. Have my own wheels and shit. However, I do live with my grandparents, but it's never been a rush for me to leave because they're old and I am a big help to them. When I do leave their house, I will make sure that I am not far. I don't ask them for anything. I do pay them rent. I come and go as I please. Anyway, because I am like this, it frustrates me to see Brian so financially unstable. Getting back to the issue, I told him, look, if you and I are going to have anything together, you have to do something about this. Long story short, he told his mother he was only going to give her half the rent and pay for one utility bill because she was sucking him dry. So eventually they got evicted because she didn't pay her half. At the same time all of this was going on, he needed a car. I gave him the money for the down payment of a car. I did not approve of the place he got the car from. It looked like some rinky-dink spot that just screamed lemons. But he assured me that the car was in good condition, and also he went to school for automotive work, so if anything went wrong, he could fix it himself. Brian was able to get a good job 30 minutes away from the, the city I lived in, which was great. So at this time, we were, looking to, we were looking to be moved in within a couple of the months. I, required, I inquired about where he would live in the meantime until we was able to live together. He said that he could stay with his aunt, <clears throat> whom lived in the same city as me. But then he ended up staying with a friend. <clears throat> Excuse me. She kept happening to set us back. And then here comes the bullshit with the car. The headlights went out on the piece of shit he worked third shift. He the, the headlights went out on the piece of shit piece of shit car. And he worked a third shift. And guess what? He is not an electron he is not he is not an electronical mechanic, so he could not fix it. I was so pissed. Like I said, shit kept hap shit kept happening and I was had to reach down in my pocket to fix the situation. I am over it. I told him he needed to come up with the money to fix it himself. I suggested another job. Next thing I know, I'm waking up to un umpteen mess missed calls and voicemails. This nigga wrecked the car. This infiltrated me even in inf Oh, excuse me. This infuriated me even more because I know this was done on purpose. Some punk shit. I cussed his ass out so bad I had a migraine for hours. And I know who was behind it. His mother, the queen of scams. I know she told him to do it because when I called his ass out about it, that nigga was on pause. No, he didn't get any insurance money from it, for it. But he did get out of his car note. Brian had to quit that job and move back to the country where he's now living with his uncle and his family. 
So now we are back to square one. Brian decided to join the Fireman Academy. His aunt gave him a truck so he would have transportation. His uncle helped out with the school fees. Things were looking good again. Of course, I was the only one working because he was in school. So I was doing the paying for the hotels, food, and activities because, of course, we still had to have our time together. I didn't mind because I'm in love with him, and I knew soon we would be together every day. Now, here again, we have a setback. Brian got injured on one of the fire ex exercises, aggravating a back injury he had from a dirt bike accident in his teen years. He was told eventually he will need to have surgery. For now, he's getting steroid injections and is on pain meds, and he and yeah, he had to quit the academy. Now Brian has a job at a local fun park for kids in his house. Whoa. Now Brian has a job at a local fun park for kids in his town until he can find a better paying job near my city. Recently, I still have been paying for all of the shit that we do together. And number two, he has gotten some money from his mother as well. An amount he did not disclose, but he damn sure had a grin on his fucking face when he got it. None of this is sitting right with me. I have bailed this man out financially way too many times. Now he's acting rather selfish with his funds. I get it. It's been without, I get it. He's been without for almost a year, but we're trying to build some shit together. He initially had told me that he has, he was going to let me handle his money and we would talk about a budget for him, but I haven't seen anything. I went off on him about this matter, letting him know that I'm done reaching in my pocket for shit. So if he wants to see me and do any kind of extracurricular activities, it needs to be on his dime. All he said was he knows what he needs to do and he will pull himself on a budget. He will put himself on a budget. We had made plans for him to come see me on a day off. We had both had. But after I said what I said about not paying for shit, he did not bother to come down to visit me. Didn't even say he wasn't coming. He just texted me links to videos and memes all day and went on about things like everything was all good. I'm so pissed and hurt at the same time. I don't know what I should do at this point. I love him, but I can do all bad by myself. What would you do, April? I hope this email wasn't too long. Thanks. Lisa. Well, so Miss Lisa has been with somebody for four years, and he's financially non-stable, okay? He ain't stable in the money cards. He's been living with his mama. His mama is a big scam artist. She's always coming up with some dumbass scams. So he's been living with her to help her out with the means of bill paying, rent paying. But he was paying for everything all himself, which was leaving his ass bone as dirt broke dry. Okay. And Lisa was tired of it. She finally spoke up with it. And her boyfriend, Brian, decided he wasn't going to pay for all of the bills at his mother's house. We're going to go hassies. And I would think that's only fair anyway. Well, his mother didn't pay for her part. And they got evicted. So basically, Lisa's boyfriend, Brian, has been house hopping. He got a car. Lisa helped him with the car. The headlights went out on it. It didn't work. It was an electronical issue. And somehow, he wrecked his car. Listen, it all seems like a scam. Basically, let's just boil down. It all boils down to this. Lisa's tired of the bullshit, okay? This nigga ain't never got no money. He can't help out with things. First, she said he was really great. He's great in bed. He's a good guy. He's a handyman. He's well-mannered. He's respectful. Everybody, friends, family love him. But she's tired of it. She's tired of always going in her pocket and paying for shit. And I get it. I totally can understand and get it. I have been in that situation as well. Maybe a little bit different, though. You know what I'm saying? It was with my ex-husband. I was paying like 85% of everything. And I got tired of it after a while. It will wear you thin. It will fucking suck you dry and make you numb, okay? That shit will. And it does. And then, on top of that, the nigga that I had living here with me, everything was all good with him in the beginning. Like, for the first few he was living for like seven months seven yeah like seven months i think it was like seven months everything was all good then you know what i'm saying um first few months and then after a while he was a leech he wasn't doing shit he wasn't even trying to look for no job first of all it was a he was a scam artist he basically wanted to live out here in arizona because he's a motherfucking snitch and didn't want to be in new york where his true roots are at where all the bullshit in his life but so same situation he used me and it was all the same type of scenario. I get it. And I'm sorry if I... I gotta say hi to somebody. Hold on. 
Okay, so I had to um, stop the video for a second because I heard my grandson on the other side of my door. So, you know, I had to say hi to him. So, but anyway, like I was saying about Lisa, I totally get it. Like, that shit gets to be overwhelming after a while. Like, when you're constantly, constantly, constantly picking up the slack for anyone, especially if it's an adult. If it's, like, one of your kids, even that shit gets to be a little bit hectic after a while. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, I have five children, and I have one that does, does not live here in Arizona. And he's he'll be 25 in August. But, you know, it started, like, irritating me because he would call me up for money, call me up to order him pizza all the time, and I would pay for it online. Like, every Friday, this would be, like, an every Friday thing. But he's working, his girlfriend is working, they have their own apartment, and it's like, you know what, I'm not going to keep picking up slack up for you, you're an adult, you have your own family, so I get it, sometimes, even though the person could be so nice, they could be well respected, they could be a handyman, they could be loving, they could be great with children, there's just one thing that could just really get to you and suck you dry. Now, my, I'm the first, when I first read the email, I was like, okay, she's describing this guy, uh, Brian, as all these great things, and now she's complaining about his finances, you know what I'm saying, like, Bitch, you really are seeing this a bigger picture to all of this. You, what are you, money hungry? You know, this is the first thing I'm thinking when I'm reading the email. And I'm pretty sure that you guys are thinking the same thing. Like, damn, bitches can't never be happy. They're always about money. They're always about money. But it's not even like that with her. You know what I'm saying? When you get more into detail in the email, it's like, hold the fuck up. This nigga is really not trying too hard. It's one thing after another after another. And now I'm understanding why she's feeling like this. You know what I'm saying? I get it. There are a lot of great men in the world. Um, some of them may not be financially stable all the time. Sometimes you got to work together in the relationship to build one another. But if the person is really not trying to build themselves up, then how the fuck is you supposed to help them? You got to help yourself too. You can't allow another person to just constantly keep helping you and helping you and helping you. And then you got to think of it and you got to look at the bigger picture. Maybe Brian is great with kids. Maybe Brian is so respectable and handy to Lisa because She's been helping him all these times. I mean, I'm sorry, but I wouldn't want to bite the hand that feeds me, okay? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to be real nicey-nicey to this motherfucker who's trying to help me and take care of me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't about to show them my true colors, but it seems like she's starting to see who he really is. You know what I'm saying? How his family is, what type of person he is. Now, it did seem like he was trying to better himself, you know what I'm saying? But it does seem like he is still kind of on a immature level. You know what I'm saying? Like... You don't want to, he doesn't, he didn't bother to text or call and say, listen, I can't make it because my, my funds are not all together for our date. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to be there. He didn't even bother to text or call and, and give her an explanation of why he wasn't coming through. He just fucking sends her text messages of dumb shit all day. Like if that's supposed to suffice and she's supposed to forget like, oh, we have plans and you were supposed to take care of those plans, but nigga, you ain't. Like I hate people that try to beat around the bush and cover up some dumb shit that they done did i can't stand shit like that to me that's like some type of lie you know what i'm saying just admit to the shit where you were fucking wrong at dude like don't try to play on my intelligence however it ain't always about money with females or men you know what i'm saying we not in relationships to be with somebody because they got money not all of us you know what i'm saying like with me if i find somebody i'm listen if I find someone to be with in a relationship, I'm sorry, but I'm not really trying to be with no broke-ass nigga, no broke-ass man, you know what I'm saying? The, and the reason why is because I've already been through shit in my life. I have already taken care of men in my life, meaning my ex-husband, okay? You know what I'm saying? And my ex-boyfriend. I have already done that, and I have my own children to take care of. So I am not about to let you or allow you to leech the fuck off of me. You know what I'm saying? I have already been that. And for me to allow you to do that, I would be a fucking fool so i would feel stupid and foolish if i was to start dating or messing with somebody who ain't got shit because that's just gonna allow him to see oh this bitch got some shit she got a nice car she got a nice house she got some nice shoes on i'm digging her walmart outfit you know what i'm saying he is going to start feeling like okay well i'm with somebody who got something so i'm going to use that to my advantage you never know so i'm just going to keep myself out of that equation and i'm not going to deal with somebody that has no money i'm not saying that i'm money hungry bitch because i'm not but i'm not going to start dating someone who ain't got shit because now i got somebody else to take care of and stress myself out about nah for each person there is a person you know what i'm saying 
I just feel like that. Like, okay, your broke ass is broke. Then maybe you should go be with somebody who fucking broke and y'all could build together. And that might be wrong, but she was with him for like four years or whatever. And they was trying to move in together, but she has been carrying the load all this motherfucking time. I'm sorry, but that shit wears thin on a motherfucker after a while. It really does. In the beginning, it's nothing. You know, you think of it as helping a person. But then, damn, over time, this shit is just still constantly, constantly. How much motherfucking help do you need? You need to get on your motherfucking two feet and help your own self. Okay? What the fuck I would do? Honestly, Brian might be good in the bed, honey. But there's a lot of other dicks in the world that is good in the bed that got some dinero that are stable. Mentally, physically. Okay? Stable. All right? And financially. And to me, it seems like Brian ass ain't mentally stable in a lot of other things besides the finances. Mentally, he ain't because he's still depending and he's still acting like a child with certain situations. Okay? I'm going to need you to be a grown up in this whole thing and do it the right fucking way and respond to me as an adult would. Great. Handyman. Get a handyman job. Now you doing scams and schemes with your mama and you crash in a car. I think that was so not cool what he did with the car situation. So the electrical shit with the headlights stopped working. An easy fix. Let me tell you something. My 2004 Chevy Malibu, the headlight on the left side kept going out. And I kind of figured it out why. You know what I'm saying? A bitch is handy herself. Okay, I learned how to change the headlight. And then it just keep, it would stop. It would, when you would hit a bump, it would go in and out. You know what I'm saying? And that's not cool driving in the dark. One day I figured this shit out. I'm going to get me, at first I thought about getting a rubber band. But that's like, oh, it'll get hot and it'll melt. Got me a little hair scrunchie, little hair tie, and hooked it up a certain area of that light. It ain't never went the fuck out since. I ain't got to pay for the shit to get fixed because it was just a little issue. It was Maybe it was electrical. Maybe it wasn't. But either way, I fixed the issue myself. I wouldn't go crash in my motherfucking car just so I wouldn't have to pay a car note on it. Maybe Brian should have figured out a way to get it fixed. Other than listening to his mother with a scam of to crash the car. So he crashed the car and got out of a car note, but didn't get any insurance money from it. That's kind of fucked up because you know why? That money that Lisa gave him went into getting that car. She gave him the down payment money for that car. And what did he do? He wasted her fucking money. And he listened to his mother. That's a mama's boy. That's a scam artist. That's a scam. That would have pissed me the fuck off. So now you know Lisa that what I would do, honestly, and I'm not saying to be spiteful, but sometimes you just got to let go. You got to sit back and allow this person to swallow themselves, sink themselves, okay? Regardless of how many times you tell him to get a good job or look for work or try to better himself, he's going to listen, but it's going to go out of one ear because had he really listened, then you wouldn't be in this predicament. And after a while, it does get very... It makes you numb and it gets very irritating. Trust me, take it from somebody who has been dealing with this, who has went through this for many years in a marriage. I paid for 85% of shit, like I said. And after a while, it started to really irritate me. And then I started feeling like, why the fuck is you even here? We got these kids and these bills and nigga, you ain't even doing shit to progress. Okay. All you keep coming up is with all oh, the shit that I could do and shit I could make money with when you could just do the right motherfucking thing. It started getting to be real irritating to me, and I started just starting to feel numb, and I started feeling like, you know what? I'm not saying I'm better than you, but I could do bad by my motherfucking self. And you know something? That is so truthful. It's the truth. You can do bad by yourself. If you got an extra monkey on your back that is holding you down, it becomes a burden, and it makes your life worse. You have to let it go. Just like I let go of the last relationship that I was in with this motherfucker, thank God. And as soon as I let go, my finances became a whole lot better. You know what I'm saying? Meaning I was able to save more money. I was able to save more. I was able to pay more of my bills. I was able to go to the dentist and pay for that out of my pocket. I was able to buy more things for my kids. You know what I'm saying? So it is true. You can do bad by yourself. You know what I'm saying? You don't need nobody to do bad with. 
Because they just going to make you do worser. And worser is not a fucking word. It's worse. But it sometimes feel like that word should be a motherfucking word. Because some people can make your situation a whole lot worser. Okay? Bottom line. So my suggestion to you, Lisa, is get out of it while you can. It ain't all about the money. So as I was saying before, my memory card cut off. Sometimes you got to get out of it while you can. It ain't all about the money all the time. Some women are not money hungry. So when you see us or you hear us talking about, oh, well, that nigga ain't got no money. I ain't fucking with him. Or he broke. I can't mess with him. Don't think it's because it's money hunger or we not going to be with men because they don't have the money. It has a lot to do with the things that we've been through in life and that some people want to just take, take, take from us that have stuff, that have worked so hard for it. And some things are just not worth it dealing with so don't think that women only get in relationships with men that have money because they got money it has a lot to do with because i got my own shit nigga and i'm not about to allow you to take shit from me you know what i'm saying that's what it got to deal with. And like with me, do you really think that I want to deal with somebody that's broke? Listen, I'm just making ends meet, okay? I'm not trying to get with some nigga that ain't got shit. I don't need him to pump me up financially. I don't need him to do anything for me financially. But I am not about to allow him to take from me. You know what I'm saying? That I'm not about to do. I'm not about to allow that. So with that being said, yes. I would definitely just back off a little bit and find me a new outlet. Let him dig himself into a hole. But maybe you should let him know, listen, I've tried to work with you and I've tried to help you. But unfortunately, you're not understanding where I'm coming from. And with that being said, this whole situation is really um, just stressing me out. And I think we need to part ways. You know, I wish nothing but the best in life for you. And I always want to be your friend. But... I've tried to help you and you just need to help yourself now because you're not seeing where I'm coming from. And just leave it at that. I would run as fast as the fuck I could because, listen, honey, it's 50-50 in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? It's 50-50 in a relationship. All right, you guys. So here we go. Hey, April. I love your channel. You can call me Chanel for this story. So my issue is that I'm on my second marriage. My current husband is on his third. He's a mama's boy and she's his mother is manipulative to get what she wants. Sometimes I'm not sure she wants if she wanted him to get married. He often says that before I came along, it was just going to be just the two of them. So we've been staying with her temporarily. So he says because he's worried about her. She's almost 80 years old, but she's not sick or anything. In fact, she can probably run circles around the two of us. But her stuff was getting cut off and she wasn't paying her bills. And there's more than enough money because in so, yes, there's cause for concern. Oh, hold on. Excuse me. In fact, she can probably run circles around the two of us, but her stuff was getting her utilities was getting cut off and she wasn't paying her bills. And there's more than enough money coming in. So, yes, there's cause for concern, but there's nothing physically wrong with her that I can see. But she probably doesn't eat right. She does hoard things and she spends too much money and wants to spend our money, too. So she lived with us once before when she had nowhere to stay. And let's just say that it almost ended our marriage. We still have our house. Actually, it's my house that I had before we got married. We had a house, too, in a really nice upscale neighborhood. But because he listened to his mother and not me and did what she told him to do and not what I suggested, he lost his house and he had to move back into mine. And he has regretted it ever since. I think this is just an excuse not to live in our house because it's not in the best neighborhood and I never use the word my to him so that's why she's saying our house I say it's ours because I don't want to hold anything over his head I am not that type of woman he is always comparing me to his prior wives and women and how they and how they did him wrong and waiting for me to do something wrong to him as well but again I'm not that woman so fast forward back to now we have been taking care of two households, ours and his mother's, and we still are, but we are not really living, um, and we are, and we still are, but we are really not living in our home. He says we should rent our home out, which I am all for, but it needs to be fixed up, which we don't have the money for right now. We just literally left our stuff there, and we've been staying at his mother's house, living out of a suitcase. 
We started working on our home and then he just stopped working on our house. I hate staying with his mother. She is mothering us to death. She questions me about everything, including why I'm dressed a certain way and where I'm going and where I've been. We'll come home and she will have cleaned up our bedroom and it wasn't even dirty. Sometimes I think she's just being nosy and going through our stuff because she moves everything around. She washes our clothes and changes our sheets and treats us like we're two years old. He probably likes it, but it's an invasion of my privacy. I do everything to make sure I never leave a mess and I keep the rest of the house clean too. For a while, I was hiding my dirty clothes because she has messed up some of my pieces by washing them together and she was asking me, where are my clothes? Because she was looking for them. Our marriage is being stained once again and I'm afraid we will and are headed for divorce if we don't get out of this he says he wants to get a house he's he says she needs help she doesn't want to move from her house of course I want him to take care of his mother and I have just been sucking it up because after all it is his mother and they are all um, and they are all each then they are all they have together I really can't even begin to go into detail about the things that I've been going on through going through and going on we would be here all day and reading this email we get into stupid little arguments she pisses him off and he takes it out on me he thinks I am being sneaky with my adult son and doing things behind his back that's what him and his mom have said about our marriage um, and why did he get married to me but yet again I am NOT that type of woman I don't hide anything and I don't go behind his back I have a business and he's always saying he doesn't know where the money goes but I always show him and it doesn't and he doesn't remember when he spends all of his money and then I'm paying for everything. I pay some of his bills and he pays some of his bills and he keeps blaming it on me as to why we can't get a house when he is the one that needs to be the one that qualifies for the house. I've already done the paperwork for him and I've submitted and I've submitted it to the proper authorities. Well, this is getting long and I need to cut it off. But basically she puts thoughts into his head and spouts and, and he spews it back at me. It's not, it's not him talking. I don't know how to deal with this right now. I'm starting to blow up more frequently because he's been belittling me in front of his mother. And I will not stand for that while she is standing there smirking and smiling while he belittles me. He doesn't want me to work when he's not working. And that's just ridiculous. He was never like that before we started staying here. Like right now, he is off of work because he just got hurt with his company and they went on strike. So he is at home doing nothing but laying around the house with her all day, gossiping and talking about people. And I'm not about that life. He doesn't give me any money, so this is my only income. And my income is based on my completion rate and timelines of completion. I get bonuses for getting work done early. Well, thanks for listening. <laughs> Even if you don't have time to read this on your channel, could you please reply? I do love my husband, but this is a really frustrating me and it's making me feel, it's starting to make me feel, excuse me, and it's making me feel, it's, and it's making my feelings start to wane. Thank you for your time. Okay, listen. <laughs> I know I kind of probably went all over the place with Chanel's email because she kind of went all over the place and it, the way she worded things kind of made it confusing. So basically I'm just going to break it down for you guys. <sighs> Chanel and her husband are living with his mother. Okay. At his mother's home. Chanel got her own house. Okay. But it, it's not in the best neighborhood. Chanel had this house before she met her husband, before she married her husband. She's on her second marriage. Her husband is on his third. He wants to live with his mother because she's 80 years old and he feels like she needs help. But Chanel already said this lady can run circles around anybody. She don't need help. She's not feeble. She's not handicapped. The, the old lady just won't pay her bills. Okay, she'd rather spend her money up and not pay her bills. So things have been getting cut off. So basically, they're there to make sure that she's doing the right thing. Okay, babysitting her. But... Her mother-in-law has been changing their sheets, washes their laundry, basically just treats them like little kids. First of all, I'm sorry, but I'm a grown-ass woman. I don't really need anybody to do my laundry. I don't need anybody to change my sheets. I don't need anybody to cook my meals or anything like that, okay? We are grown-ass adults, and she is in a marriage, okay? So she got this old-ass lady basically waiting on her hand for like a maid service, okay? 
Bitch, you ain't Beyonce. This old lady don't need to be taking care of you and washing your motherfucking sheets and clothes. I understand totally how you feel. That is an invasion of your privacy. And yeah, she probably is going through your shit being motherfucking nosy because that's what fucking people do. Shit, if I'm in your room cleaning the fuck up, I'm going to be nosy too and see what the fuck I can find out about your ass. And that's what his mother is doing. She is going through your shit trying to find out what she can find out so that she can use that shit and rub it in her son's face so that he can leave you the fuck alone and it could be her and him once again, okay? That's probably what the fuck happened to his other two wives prior to you. But yet, and still, he's comparing you to them. Let me tell you something. Don't allow no man to fucking compare you to his past relationships, okay? I'm pretty sure that we all do that shit. We compare the last one or the one we with from other life experiences. That's what everybody the fuck does. However, you need to set some boundaries, okay? Here's the boundaries. We're going to fix up our house, and we're going to move the fuck back in. And if you don't like the neighborhood that it's in, then why don't you put in for our new home and we can get the fuck up out of here and over there and we can rent out our house and we can go and check on your mother when she needs to be checked on but right at now I do not want to live here anymore so let's go back to our own home and fix it up as we live there and then once we fix it up we can rent it out and we can move into our own house but I don't want to live with your mama because she's going through my shit now I'm pretty sure that Honey, Chanel, once you say these things to your husband and you complain about his mother to him, he probably going to go all ballistic and think, oh, you don't like her, you don't like my mother, etc., 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 because that's exactly what he's going to do. I'm pretty sure that's what he's going to do. But no, it's not a complaint. It's an invasion of your privacy. You guys are an adult. You guys need to be in your own home. You guys need to be in your own surroundings. How y'all supposed to have a motherfucking family if you got this old-ass woman listening in on every motherfucking move you make, asking you where you been, where you going? When you having sex, when do you need your sheets changed? Where your dirty clothes is at, okay? Hold the fuck up. There's there's boundaries here. And you need to have a talk with his mother about the boundaries. Because if you're going to stay there and he doesn't want to leave and you're going to stay there, then you're going to have to say things. You're not going to have to hide your clothes. Because hiding your clothes is not going to help you out any. It's going to allow this old lady to continuously do shit. Yes, this old bitch is going through your shit. I'm sorry. Old people could get it too. I'm not going to fucking put her in a closet or in a bubble and not curse at her. She old and she fucking knows the old. Old people be the worst. Them motherfuckers is no Z. If y'all motherfucking bitches think old people ain't nosy, I'm going to just give you guys an example, okay? Now, mind you, I live in Garden Lakes in Arizona, in Avondale, okay? In Avondale. I live in Garden Lakes. It's kind of bougie over here. I don't know why the fuck my black ass is here, but I live here, all right? I rent a house, okay? Now, mind you, I've been living on this block for almost four years. It's a gated community. Four years. And the only motherfucking neighbors that I speak to are the ones that's on the right of me when I come outside. When I'm sitting this way, they on the left to me. They're the only ones that I speak to. My friend that used to live across the street from me, the porn star, she no longer lives there. She's moved back to LA. So I don't have her. So I did have two families, but now I only got one. I don't speak to no motherfucking body. I don't. Here's an example. Last year, about a year and a half ago, um, about, about a year ago, I get my, our year, year, a little bit over a year ago, I get my Tahoe pulled out of my garage. I got it pulled out because it didn't start and the tires were flat on it. Two of the tires are flat. So I called my car insurance company and they sent over the tow um, package that the towers that were part of my insurance company. They had to hook the truck up and tow it out and put it on a flatbed because it was two flat tires and it wouldn't turn on. Now, mind you, you know that the car wasn't getting repo because it's a 2001. I would hope that it wasn't getting repoed. It's like 16 years old. There's no reason for anybody's 16 year old truck to be getting repoed, okay? But nobody else knows this. So anyway, like I said, I don't speak to nobody over here. So the, the, the guy, he got the toe. He's, he's pulling it out. Now, three houses down, I noticed this old-ass fucking lady. This old bitch had to be, like, in her late 70s. Now, mind you, I have seen her many a times, but the bitch never spoke to me. And I'm fine with that. I'm cool because, you know what? I don't really need to be friends with my motherfucking neighbors because these bitches be too nosy. Sometimes when you too neighborly, that's when all the motherfucking problems start. And I've had these issues in New York. So I kind of, like... If you want to say hi and bye to me, that's cool. But we're not about to have a long conversation. But if you ain't saying hi to bye to me, that's cool too, okay? So I'm outside talking to the gentleman who is putting my car and towing it the fuck out, pulling it slowly out of the garage. Because mind you, there are two flat tires, so you can't just yank the motherfucker truck out. You're going to fuck my rims up. So he's quietly pulling it and it's quietly going up on his flatbed. And I look over to the left of me. 
and I see this old bitch. She is out of her house, like literally standing in her driveway watching what's going on. Okay. Now me and the tow guy, we sitting there talking about New York because he's been living in Arizona probably for like 15 years. It's an old white guy. And um, he's like, you know, your neighbor right there. And I'm like, no, I don't even speak to them. He's like, she awful nosy. I was like, yeah, I know. So I didn't even say anything to her. I just looked and did like this. Like, how you doing? That was it. She looked at me like I had two motherfucking heads and <laughs> didn't say nothing. Okay, whatever. Bitch, you ain't got to say shit to me, but stop being motherfucking nosy. Did this old motherfucking bitch. I went in the house for a quick second. I come out. Is this bitch standing in my, on the other side of my driveway? She done walked her old fucking ancient ass from her house to watch him and be nosy about what the fuck is going on in my house. She's standing there. Now she on the other neighbor's property, like the next door neighbor's looking and watching. So now you, you right here. I'm like, Hey, how you doing? How high? Can I help you with anything? No. So I already asked you, can I help you with anything? How you doing? And she said, no. I was like, so why are you standing here? What? Well, I'm just trying to see what's going on. Obviously my car is getting towed. What can I help you with? This old bitch rolled her motherfucking eyes at me and just continued to stand there. I said, listen, if there's nothing that I can do for you, can you please walk away and get off of my property? Okay. She looked at me like, now I had three motherfucking heads. She probably wanted to say this nigga bitch. That's why she getting her car towed. She ain't pay for the shit. That's why she been hiding in her garage. I know what motherfucking old ass people think because they old as motherfuckers and they nosy as motherfuckers. Okay. And here's the thing. This is what I'm talking about. Motherfuckers that are old can get it too. So I'm pretty sure, Chanel, that this old 80-year-old lady was going through your shit. Old people are the worst. They're nosy. A lot of them are prejudiced. They don't give a fuck what they say. They will call you a nigga or a spick or anything else they can fucking think of out of their racist mouths. Because they use their old ass age as a fucking excuse. So her old ass might be 80, but that old ass lady is motherfucking nosy. So here's the kicker. Now, if your marriage is almost on its last two feet because this old ass lady, what you need to do is have a sit down with your husband. And if you can't do that and he is not trying to meet you halfway in the middle, then what you need to do, sweetheart, unfortunately unfortunately is pack your shit the fuck up and go back to your own motherfucking house i am sorry but i am not about to be living out of a suitcase in somebody else's house while this bitch is belittling me and her son is belittling me and she is going through my shit and they both be a motherfucking nosy that's not what the fuck we about to do up in this bitch okay let me tell you something I'm not about to live with nobody, but I'm not about to allow anybody to belittle me. And if your husband is running off at the pussy, meaning he is running off at the motherfucking mouth in front of his mother and she's standing there snickering, this sweetheart, bitch, it's time for you to pack your shit the fuck up and leave. Because there ain't no regards to you and ain't no respect to you in that household. And as long as you motherfucking stay there, you are going to be reaping what the fuck you sow and you are going to be on her and his terms. Allow them two to stay the fuck together because like you said, he's a mama's boy and he on his third marriage. Try to question why the fuck his first two didn't last. It's probably because he's a mama's boy and he stay up under his mama's breast and titty, her old wrinkle up ass motherfucking titties and he's still holding on. You gotta let that shit the fuck go and let this be your last motherfucking marriage. I'm just saying. Me, personally, I wouldn't deal with it. I'm, I'm sorry. People, some people might feel like, oh, but she old. She can't get it. Let me tell you something. Old motherfuckers can get it too because them bitches used to be young. And don't let they age fool you because they know what the fuck they doing half of them and they know what the fuck they saying. Don't let no old motherfucker disrespect you. Some people be like, oh, you need to respect your elder. Well, her elderly ass need to respect me too. Okay, just because you 80 don't give you a motherfucking pass to fucking respect or disrespect me. Okay, don't give you a motherfucking disrespect pass. Okay, you better recognize, bitch, you was once my age and bitch, you better hope you make it to 90 before I put these motherfucking paws on your ass. Listen, um, Chanel, sometimes you got to let go. 
And as long as you stay there, you are on their grounds. You are on their territory. You are on their property. You're going to have to let go and leave his ass the fuck alone. And let her old fucking ass go about her business. I'm just saying. I'm not about to let no old geezer fucking irritate me. To hell to the motherfucking no. Hell to the motherfucking no. She's nosy. She's going through your shit. That's like so creepy. I wouldn't want no old ass lady washing my clothes. Like, okay, so my daughter Tati, she washes my clothes sometimes. Um... Only if I ask her to. She don't come up in here and wash my clothes and get my clothes. She don't come in here and, get my ch and change my sheets. Um, She don't do that. I, I do my own sheets, okay? I change my own shit. So, I mean, and if she was to change my I do. I change my own sheets because she wouldn't do what I do. I, I take the sheets off my bed, wash them the same day, and hang them outside to dry. Same thing with my comforters because I like my shit to match. If I have my daughter do it, she Put me up some bitch match shit. You be like, bitch, what the fuck happened to your comforter set? So I like to do my own shit, okay? And on top of that, I just feel like I'm an adult. I can do it myself. So therefore, yeah, that's kind of weird and creepy. But she is going through your shit. She knows he has a motherfucker. That bitch is going through all y'all shit. Trust and believe. Don't allow him to belittle you because of his mama. I'm just saying, diva. Yes, don't, I'm just saying. So let's get on to the next one. Hey, April, my name is Kim, not my real name. And I'm having family issues and I need your advice. So a couple of years ago, I traveled to see my cousins for a kid's birthday out of state. Instead of driving, I made a flight. I had prearranged to stay with my cousin, Tabitha. Tabitha's sister, Pam, and I are like oil and water. The closer I have gotten with her sisters, the worse we have gotten along. So the night before I flew out, Pam called me and said I couldn't stay with Tabitha because she was having health issues. And if I did not have anywhere else to go, she guessed I could stay with her. Since we do not get along, I said, don't worry, I will figure it out. It was late and I thought I would have many places to go. So I got on the plane in the morning and landed and found out I did not have to have a place to stay. Most people were at work, out of town or unavailable. So here I was homeless at LAX. I threw myself at a pity party. I walked into a hotel got a room and checked in early being homeless stranded really made me think about all my life i bent over backwards for a relationship with my cousin since i was an only child my cousin tabitha called me asking where i was i told her i was at a hotel she asked me why since i had arranged to stay with her so i told her about what her sister said she was confused but didn't say anything to clear it up i got my got me a flight home the next morning so fast forward to 2017 i had had to see I've had to see my cousins, but I have felt like I, owed, I was owed an apology and the tension is overwhelming. They, however, act like nothing has ever happened, which made me feel even more angry. So we had a family wedding and we were all seated at the same table. When me and my husband got to the table, I did not have a seat. So me and my husband were seated with a non-family members. We had a good time, but since I lived out of town, I do not see my family very often. Come to find out, Pam... Tabitha's cousin brought me someone, brought someone with her who wasn't RSVP and was in my seat. But no one acted like they saw a problem. It wasn't the time and place, but I felt like I would need to confront Pam real soon. In my families, everyone knows Pam is ignorant and the word around town is, Pam, let it go. I'm tired. I think someone needs to put her in a place. Am I wrong for wanting this conversation? Signed, a weary in the West Valley. Okay, so hmm, she must live out here because that we call it the West Valley. Okay, so Kim basically booked herself a flight to go see her cousin Tabitha for her birthday. Arrangements was already made for Kim to stay with Tabitha. Tabitha's sister, Pam, calls um, Kim and was like, well, you can't stay with my sister because she's sick. So she was like, all right, well, I'll just find somewhere else to stay because she did not want to stay with Pam, Tabitha's sister, because they just don't get along. So, you know, she gets to LAX, she gets to LA, and she has nowhere to stay. So she books up, she, she walks into a hotel and, and stays there. Tabitha is like calling her, like, where are you? Why are you in this hotel room? She's like, your sister told me I couldn't stay with you, basically, because you weren't feeling well. Tabitha's like, what? And gets confused. She didn't clear up, no tension. Freaking Kim leaves the next day and goes home. Fast forward, now it's New Year. There's a family wedding. They all supposed to sit at the same table. When Kim and her husband get to, you know, the after party of the 
wedding. What did you call that? The um, I forget what it's called. But um, let me know what it's called. I forget. Okay, what a reception, a reception, reception. Okay, so after when once they get to the reception. Kim and her husband have nowhere to sit, but they all supposed to sit at the same table. Well, Pam, come to find out, Pam invited some people that um, were not on the list. So they sitting at Kim and her husband's spot. So Kim and her husband have to sit somewhere else. They still had a good time. But basically, this, it all boils down to this. Kim is tired of Pam and her bullshit. And some people are like, let it go, just let it go, just let it go. But the shit is overwhelming and it's aggravating her. So she's like, should she confront her? Hell, motherfucking yeah. Let me tell you something. Family will be the ones that'll do your ass in all the motherfucking time. Y'all bitches seem to think that because y'all family that the shit is supposed to be all good and gravy and we supposed to be the best of motherfucking friends because we family and et cetera, et cetera. Nah, bitches, okay? Family be the one that'll get your motherfucking asses clipped in a heartbeat, okay? Just because you blood, that is the reason. Just because your family don't mean that you could just let the shit override and bypass it and don't say nothing. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna let you do me in once. And then maybe even twice, but the third motherfucking time, I'm not about to allow you to keep fucking walking all over me like I ain't shit. Because as long as you allow this bitch to keep doing you dirty, the bitch gonna keep on. She gonna feel like she got the upper hand and she going to keep doing your ass dirty. Don't let it fucking go, okay? Let me tell you something. You can listen to whoever the fuck you want to listen to, but at the end of the day, it's your feelings, okay? It's you that's being disrespected. It's your feelings. So, no, I would not allow it to go. No, I wouldn't let it slide. Yes, I would fucking confront her, okay? And if the bitch gets mouthy and she keeps running off at the pussy, then what you're going to have to let her know is this. Listen, sweetheart, I'm not here for all of that. We ain't about to do this. I'm going to just let you know how it is. And if you don't fucking like it, oh, well, too motherfucking bad. But I'm tired of your shit, and I am not allowing you to fucking walk all over me anymore and treat me like shit. Sometimes you got to let a person motherfucking have it, okay? Because if you don't, them bitches are going to constantly keep running off at the fucking pussy and allowing and keep doing shit to you. I'm sorry, but that's the reason why I think I am the way I am today. When I was in high school, I got picked on a lot. I got picked on in junior high school. Freckle face, yellow, pissy yellow. And the one time in high school, the fucking girl, she just kept at it. And I used to get bullied a lot. Like, get called names and people would say things and I would just let it go. I wouldn't say anything. I would let it go. And I would just not say anything. I would let it go. That one motherfucking time, it was it. The bitch threw a motherfucking spitball at me. Okay? From the back of the classroom. I mean, like the... The ninth or 10th grade of the time. And you guys probably might think that, oh, I was always bitchy like this. No, I was never bitchy. I would never confront people. I always was like in my own little shell, in my own little world. I didn't bother anybody. This is the type of person that I was because I was shy. And it was kind of like I was nervous and I was scary. And I would just allow people to make fun of me. People would make fun of my shoes because they had four stripes instead of three. They would, they would call them balloons. They were called balloons. They weren't Adidas. They were they're called balloons. I was poor as a kid, okay? People picked on me all the fucking time. And after a while, it gets to be too fucking much, all right? And a person explodes. And I got tired of it. So what did I do? When she fucking threw that spitball at me, I got up, walked out of that classroom, I went upstairs, and I got my cousin, and I came back downstairs, and I walked through the back of the classroom this time, because there were two doors, and I beat this bitch ass with my cousin watching. They only went and got my cousin because I felt like it was a little bit more protection for me. You know what I'm saying? And I got tired of it. And then a couple months later, I got into my first fight outside of the school. And I got tired of that. So, people do get tired of shit. And it gets to be a little bit overwhelming. And then ever since then, I was like, I'm not allowing anybody to walk all over me. I'm not allowing anybody to say whatever they want to say to me anymore. Because I'm not going to allow it. And to this day, I don't allow it. You know what I'm saying? I might have allowed it sometime in my life as an adult, which I did. But that shit got overwhelming and I got tired of it too. And for those reasons, I got arrested. You know, because I got tired of my husband, my ex-husband, running off at the mouth while he was drunk. So what did I do? I bashed him upside his head and I got arrested for attempted murder. And I spent two weeks in fucking jail, okay? Two fucking weeks for attempted murder. Wasn't trying to kill nobody. I just got tired of it. So what I'm saying, don't let anybody allow you to explode to that point. Because it will happen. But say something about it. Don't keep allowing her to do that to you. Because if you don't say anything, you might end up like where I was, in jail. You know what I'm saying? And trust and believe, 
It was not fun. Thank God I wasn't wearing wigs back then. But it wasn't cool being arrested and being away from my kids. I had four kids at the time. I didn't want to be in jail. You know what I'm saying? But because I was bullied and I allowed people to keep doing things to me and walking all over me, this is the outcome that I had. Same scenario with my ex-husband's mother. I allowed that fucking old ass bitch to keep running her mouth and his sister to keep running their mouth and belittling me and saying smart shit. So that one day she came to my motherfucking house at 8 something in the morning banging on my door because her son was in jail. I fucking grabbed that lady up so quick and fucked her ass up. I felt good. And here got my mama. My mama is fighting the sister. It felt good. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But as long as you allow family members or anybody in your life to constantly keep walking all over you, they're going to constantly keep walking all over you. You have to put a stop to it. So, there you have it. Say something to that bitch. Say something to um Pam's ass. Because God, I sure would have a long time ago. So on that note, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this long ass real talk. I hope I wasn't all over the place for you guys. And I hope you like my Wonder Woman nightgown and all my Wonder Woman stuff because I fucking love it. And I, now I'm going to go downstairs to play with my grandson and get something to eat because I'm starving. So I love you guys. Stay diva and divalicious. And I will see you in a soon to come video. She want a bad man to come on videos. I'm feeling all this. She already know this. She want a bad man to come on videos. If you want murder me. Hey, 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 hey.